This morning, when I woke up, my senses went to work. I saw the stove, I felt the warmth of the pan, I heard the bacon crackling and smelled the aroma before I put it in my mouth and tasted heaven itself. All this is real, right? Senses don't lie. According to science, maybe not. You might not actually exist. And here's why. Pioneer wrote, Joe, make a video about the holographic universe theory. Like many scientific breakthroughs over the last half century, this one all starts with Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking studied black holes, and one of the biggest mysteries about black holes is what happens to the information once it falls inside of it. Information is basically the mathematical term for matter, like the arrangements of atoms and subatomic particles and their positions in space-time. But where does it go from there? Well, according to our favorite half-robot, half-human, it just ceases to exist. Which violates some pretty serious laws of physics, especially in quantum physics. Because a fundamental law of quantum mechanics says that information is encoded into the wave function of particles, which means, according to the law of unitarity, all the information is conserved in a quantum sense. In other words, information has a mathematical copy in the quantum world, which means that information can't ever really be lost. But general relativity, which Hawking specializes in, says that it can be lost. And that became known as the Hawking paradox. Because when you're really smart, you get to have things named after you. Oh, relativity and quantum mechanics, won't you ever get along? So along came Leonard Susskind, a quantum physicist, who had his own ideas about black holes. Coming from the quantum side of things, he postulated that the information doesn't fall into the black hole at all. It actually gets encoded under the surface of the event horizon, and what falls into the black hole is a projection of what's encoded on that surface. Kind of like the surface of the black hole is a film strip, and it's being projected onto the inside. Now, I need to say this involves math way above my pay grade and abilities. But suffice it to say that Susskind was able to tie all this together with some extreme math that actually tied together general relativity and quantum mechanics in a way that actually made sense. The only problem is, um, it didn't make sense. It was actually quite crazy. Because this means everything inside of a black hole is a perfect projection of what's on the outside of a black hole, which means there's two of everything. If you were living inside of a black hole, you would have no idea that you were simply a projection of the real you, which existed on the surface of the black hole. Which leads to the next obvious question. Are we just projections? How do we know that we're the real ones and not the copy? There's really no way for us to know. So the idea was understandably met with a healthy amount of skepticism, but it was still solid enough that mathematicians took after it to try to perfect the theory. And sure enough, someone cracked it. Juan Maldacena mathematically proved the holographic principle in what he called the ADS-CFT correspondence, a conjecture between the equivalence of string theory on anti-de Sitter space and a conjecture of conformal field theory that's defined on the boundary of ADS space. So, with the math in place, the holographic principle won out, leading even Stephen Hawking to concede that going against the holographic principle was one of the biggest blunders of his entire career. It should be noted that when we talk about projections and holograms, we're speaking in very metaphorical terms. Nobody's actually saying that there's a film strip on the edge of the universe through which light is projected that creates us. It's really more of a multi-dimensional construct of entangled quantum particles creating copies of everything in quantum space. See, we have brains and senses that are made specifically for the dimensions that we can see, that allow us to wake up in the morning and go downstairs and start our day with bacon in our bellies. And it's an enormous challenge for a person to completely rewire their brain so that things like quantum mechanics and string theory make sense. That's why there's only so few people in the world that can do it. So they use metaphors like holograms and projections so that the rest of us can get some kind of an idea of what they're talking about. But at this point, it's pretty much settled science. Figuring out whether or not we're real or the projection? Well, that's the next big step. And it's a big one. What do you think? Are we the reality or are we the projection? Let's do it up in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks to Pioneer for a question. If you have a question you'd like answered, you can hit me up on Twitter or in the comments below. If you learned anything, give me a thumbs up, and if this is your first time here and you like it, put a ring on it and subscribe. I'll come back with stuff like this every week. I think the world is a fascinating place, and I'm here to share all that interestingness with you. So you go out there, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Love you guys. Take care. Honey, it wasn't me making out with your sister, that was just the projection of me.